Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to build a decision tree classifier model. Alright, so prior to this video, I already did all my data cleaning and split my, split my data into training and test data sets. So let me just go ahead and give you a preview of this data set. So xtrain.head. So this is a preview of our data set and this data set is trying to classify the wine quality. Wine quality is our wide data frame and um, these are the features that we're going to be using to predict our wine quality. So to begin, let's go ahead and get the sklearn decision tree classifier. So we do from sklearn.tree import decision tree classifier and in a different video i'll show you how to use decision tree regressor so make sure you go ahead and watch that video and if you're working outside of google colab make sure you have scikits learn in your environment before you try to import stuff from it all right so let's go ahead and call it dtc and let's call dtc equal to decision tree classifier and we'll just instantiate it using all the default parameters so this is instantiating the model so we are instantiating the model and you can put in different parameters here so there's different parameters that you can input but in this case we just use all the defaults and we just use random state random state just basically means um, that next time i run this code i'll get similar results to what i have right now so it just kind of keeps things consistent from run to run so now the next step is um, fitting the decision tree model. So we'll do dtc.fit and then we are fitting our S train and then we are fitting our Y train. Okay. So we are after instantiating our tree model and this is the process where we actually fit our model. And like I said earlier, I've already done all my data cleaning all my encoding and before I got to this step, if I needed to encode the data or anything like that, I would do the encoding process, you know, before I get to the training process. If you look at this data set as an example, as you can see everything here is in text. If I was working with this data, I would make sure to convert male, um, female, no, yes, into numbers before I put it through my model. Okay. That's what I mean by encoding. This is the encoding, encoded data set. So that's what I mean by encoding. Taking text and putting it in number format. So now that we are done filling our data, the next thing is to use the model to predict wine quality. So in this case, let's just call our variable ypred DTC and let's say, let's do DTC.predict. And in this case, we are predicting using our S test um, data set that I already created earlier. And um, we can get a preview of this if you wanted to see what our predictions look like. Now let's just do five. So we've used our model to create a prediction. And um, this is just a preview of what our predictions are. So now that you have fit your model, you have um, done prediction with your model. How do you actually evaluate if your model is good or not? Well, in that case, um, you want to measure, you want to use some kind of metric to measure the quality of your model. All right. So if you're doing a regression problem, you use regression metrics. If you're doing a classification problem like I'm doing right now, you use classification metric. One of the most popular classification metrics is accuracy score. And right now I'm going to show you two ways to calculate accuracy score. Okay. You're going to use this accuracy score to evaluate how good your model is, the performance of your model. So I'm going to show you two ways to do it. So we can do it using scikit learn accuracy score metric. So from sklearn.metric, import accuracy score. All right, so 
Now we can just do accuracy score. And then we can put in a white test. So when you're using the accuracy store score metric, um, the first thing you put in is the true value. And the second thing you put in is the predicted value. So in this situation, um, my white test is my true value. And this right here is my predicted value. So the accuracy score for this model is 59%. And um, that's really good. So this is one way to get the accuracy score. Another way to get the accuracy score is to use the built-in method for accuracy um, from Scikit Learn Decision Tree Classifier. So this is the documentation for Scikit Learn Decision Tree Classifier. If you scroll down here, these are the parameters I showed you earlier. If you scroll down here, these are the attributes that's going to be available to you after you run the model. And we are going to be using classes and feature importances on the next video when I go to explain decision tree classifier. But if you scroll down here, you will see a um, different method. You see um, there's an apply method as a fit method, which we just use to fit our data set. There is a predict method and there's also a scoring method. This score method gives you the accuracy of your model. You know, so this is another way to calculate the accuracy using the scoring method. So if we use the scoring method here, it's very simple DTC.score. And then we are gonna provide our S test. And then we are gonna provide our Y test. So when you use the accuracy metrics, you provide the true value of Y test and you provide the predicted value of Y pred DTC. But when you're using the built and score method, you provide the um, test value, your S test and you provide your Y test and it is going to um, do the prediction and then the scoring. All right. So if we run this, we get the exact same result as this one. So there are two ways to calculate the accuracy method. You can use the built, you can use the circuit learn accuracy thing, or you can use the built in accuracy. But now that we have the accuracy for this model, how do we actually know this accuracy is good? Well, we need to compare it to the baseline. In a different video, I'll show you how to get the baseline metric for your model or for your project. So if I go ahead and put this here and run this, you can see that um, the baseline accuracy is 45% and the accuracy using our decision tree model is 59%. Okay. And of course we can um, multiply this by 100 and then uh, round it up to make it look like yeah, 59% if you wanted it to look exactly like this one. But um, so we can see that our decision tree model is performing better than our baseline model. So our baseline guess is it has a 45% accuracy, but decision tree just using the default parameters without hyperparameter tuning or without doing anything fancy is giving us a better accuracy score at 59%, which is way better than 45 percent so now that you have fit your model to your training data you've gotten your prediction using your test data you've gotten your accuracy score how do you actually know which columns in your data frame is responsible for making the most impact right so if we go back to our data frame here these are the different columns that we are going we are using to do the prediction how do you know which of these columns has the most impact on your model? How do you know which, col which columns are most responsible for making predictions? Because if you can find, like let's say five columns that has the most impact on making your predictions, you can drop the other columns, okay? So real quickly, just to give you a brief, if you do DTC dot, dot future importances, as you can see, we can um, see the future importances from this data frame, 
from this model. I keep saying that from we can see the future importances from this model. But what does this future importances actually mean? Well, in the next video, I am going to show you how to explain your decision tree classifier model. Okay, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and so you get notified when I drop the next video. The next video is going to be focused on helping you to make sense of your decision tree classifier model so that when you use a decision tree classifier model, right, and somebody asks you a question, you'll be able to explain how your model works and which features or which columns, you know, in your data frame is, res res is most responsible for your model's decisions or your model's accuracy score. To get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, just go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And this is where I have all my free data science resources, including this notebook. Or you can just go to machinelearningeducation.com. And if you, even if you click on this, you'll be able to get to this page. All right. And I create a lot of blog posts, a lot of YouTube videos, and a lot of content overall. And I end up with a lot of notebooks. And I just find it easy and more straightforward to take all my content and put it in one platform, one place where I can get, where you can get access to all my notebooks, all my videos, all my blog posts. So that's machinelearningeducation.com slash free. Go there to get access to the notebook that I use in today's video and any notebook I use in any of my videos. And you can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I write data science blog posts. And as time goes by, I'm going to create more and more data science blog posts. And even if you are here on evidencen.com, you can also click on free data science resources and be able to get to this page. That's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video, but you didn't like it, give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.